this video today we're going to be talking about exact values and the unit circle. I already talked about the unit circle and how it defines the trig functions in the last video if you want to go back and check that out. Uh, so we're going to be talking about exact values in this one here and, and how, how the unit circle works also with the other angles. If you have a calculator that looks like this one here, Casio FX991ES, it gives you the exact trig values, which is really, really, really handy. Um, I strongly suggest you have one of these. They're, uh, you're allowed to have them in the exam. They're great calculators. They'll do you for the rest of your life. Um, have all kinds of functions that you won't need yet. Um, so if you can get, get hold of one of these for the exam, they're a great help. If you can draw these two triangles out, it's pretty simple. There's only one exact trig ratio that I remember. I remember that sine of 30 is a half. So if you draw a triangle like this, put in 30 and 60, and remember sine of 30 is a half. A bit of Pythagoras gives you that's root 3. Draw this triangle out, a uh, isosceles triangle with 1 and 1 and root 2 here. These angles at the base are going to be the same, so they're both 45. Now you can get sine cos and tan of 30. 60 or 45 the exact value. So if you don't have a calculator that does it, you can draw these true tri triangles and say, for example, uh, sine of 60. Sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. Sine of 45, opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. So all of these values in this table here come from these two triangles. So if you don't have a calculator that gives you the exact values you need to learn how to draw these two triangles. Okay, let's look at the unit circle now and some symmetry of the unit circle that's going to help us with solving equations later on. Uh, tan is sine over cos. That's a helpful one. We're going to see that again when we're proving identities. So let's look at um, an angle like 120 degrees. So I can see for 120 degrees the sine value where I hit the circle and go straight across to the y-axis is about 0.85. I hit the circle, go straight down to the x-axis, that's minus 0.5. So that's the cos value for this angle. Remember, cos value is on the x-axis, sine value is on the y-axis. So for an angle of 120 degrees, or 2 pi over 3, I can see that sine of this angle here is the same as sine of 60, just looking at the symmetry. There's 120, there's 60. So whatever sine 60 is, that's the same as sine of 120 root 3 over 2. The cos values. I can see that the cos value for 120 degrees, that number there, is the same as the cos value of 240 degrees, and they're related to cos of 60. Hopefully you can see from the diagram that that value and that value are the same, only this one's negative and that one's positive. So if you look up cos of 60, go up to those special triangles, you see cos of 60 is a half, therefore cos of 120 must be negative a half. For tan values, a little bit, little bit trickier, but once again a little bit easier as well. Um, tan of 120 is sine over cos, that number divided by that number. So a positive divided by a negative, so I know straight away it's going to be negative. If I draw straight across the unit circle, I also get an angle that with the same tan value. So this angle down here is 300 degrees. 120 plus 180. You can see sine over cos, same values, only you've just swapped the negatives around. Now how's that related to tan of 60? Well the sine values are the same, the cos values are the same, only this one's positive and this one's negative. So hopefully you can see that tan of 120 and tan of 60 are the same value, only tan of 120 is negative. So if you go up to your exact triangles and look up tan of 60, you'll see it's root 3 over 1. So therefore tan of 120 is negative root 3. So here's the exact values for these three. Sine of 5 pi over 4 in your head. 5 lots of uh, pi over 4, 5 lots of 45 if you like. Or you can count round lots of 45. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There it is there, that angle there. Okay. So what we're wanting is that value right there, sine of that angle. Now how's that related to sine of 45? I can see they're exactly the same, only this one's negative. So sine of 45, I go up to my triangle. Sine of 45, sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. So the answer to this one here is negative 1 over root 2. Cos of, two, cos of that angle, so we're going to the x-axis, obviously a negative number. 
Here's cos of 30. Go straight across, you can see cos of 30 is the same value, only this one's negative. So cos of 30, root 3 over 2. So cos of 210 is negative root 3 over 2. Okay, tan of 4 pi over 3. 4 lots of pi over 3 is 4 lots of 60. So we're talking about 240 degrees, if you prefer to still think in terms of degrees. Okay, let's just zoom in on this one here and have a quick look. So here's 240 degrees, 4 pi over 3. We're looking for tan, so sine over cos. So we've got a negative over a negative, so the tan value is going to be positive here. Now if I just draw a line straight through the circle, straight across from that one there, we're also going to get an angle with the exact same tan value. So tan of 4 pi over 3 is the same as tan of pi over 3. Okay, this angle here is just going to be 60 degrees or pi over 3. Once again, I go up to my unit circle, look up 60 degrees, tan is opposite over adjacent, and you'll see that that gives you root 3. We can find the exact value of any trig function if we're given the exact value of one of them. So in this example, we know sine of x is 2 thirds, it's an acute angle, and I want to know the exact value of cos of x and tan squared x. So to find the value of cos x, I just draw a, a triangle where, it doesn't matter how you draw it, just a right angle triangle, put in an angle x, and make the sine value 2 thirds. So opposite over hypotenuse, 2 thirds, 2 over 3. Using Pythagoras, we can find the length of this side here is the square root of 5. There's the calculation. So cos of x must be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 5 over 3. Now the value, if you think about the unit circle, with an angle between 0 and 90 degrees, the cos value is always positive. So that's the final answer, root 5 over 3. If this angle had been an obtuse angle, something somewhere between 90 and 180, then I know all of those cos values are negative, so my answer would have been negative, whatever answer I got here. So the triangle just gives me the value, and I think about the unit circle to get whether it's positive or negative. For part B, tan of x would be opposite over adjacent, so 2 over root 5. So tan squared x is just that value squared, which is 4 fifths. This is very important. Tan squared x is tan of x squared. In this example, you can see I haven't actually calculated what the angle is. I never do that. I just use the exact values as I've done here with the with the triangle. My last example here is a really uh, it's a good one. It's inspired by an exam question from a few years ago that people really struggled with, uh, and kind of underlies the importance of um, of understanding the, how the unit circle works. We've got an acute angle, x, and sine of x is k. So if you look over in my unit circle here, sine of x, so if I hit the circle, go across to the y-axis, sine of x is equal to k. So that value right there is k. Now we want to find in terms of k, sine of pi minus x. All right, so let's say if x was, you know, about 40 degrees, which I've drawn here, then sine of pi minus x, 180 minus x, would be 140 degrees. So I want to know what sine of 140 is. Hopefully you can see from the symmetry of the unit circle that that value is also k. And that doesn't matter if that angle is 10, then we'd be talking about an angle over here of 170, and you can see the sine values would be the same. Okay, cos of x. If you look at the unit circle here, the height is k, the length of the hypotenuse is 1. I've kind of just transformed this around. If you want to look at it like that, that would be 1, that would be k. I need to find this length here along the base. So a bit of Pythagoras' theorem. This squared plus this squared equals that squared. It gives me this length on the bottom is root 1 minus k squared. That is the cos value. Last example. Tan of pi over 2 minus x. Okay, tricky. Here's x. Let's say x was 40 degrees tan of pi over 2 minus x, or 90 minus x, you'd be looking at tan of 50. All right, so what's the relationship here? Well, basically you can see that tan of x is sine over cos. So the sine value divided by the cos value, and we've worked those out. That's k over root 1 minus k squared. When you look at tan of 90 minus x, what happens is that the sine and the cos values have swapped around. 
Now it's easier to see this if I make it just a little bit more extreme. So let me draw some lines on here. If you think of it at like 10 degrees and compare that to 80 degrees. Okay. So for this first angle, the sine value is small, the cos value is close to 1. For this angle, the sine value is big, sorry, cos to the y-axis, the sine value is close to 1, and the cos value is small. Those two have swapped around. So seeing that those swapped around, tan of 90 or pi over 2 minus x is, we just swap them around. Root 1 minus k squared on the top and k on the bottom.